And here are all the items included in your VLP UL kit. We're going to get started step one, disassembling a device. It's going to be a complete Von Duper 99 device. We'll start by removing the head cover and that front bracket. We recommend using a 5 16th nut driver to remove these two screws. If you don't have one, a flat head will also work. Once those screws are removed, we'll take off the rear bracket. Next, we're going to slide off the base rail. And once the base rail is off, we're going to remove the push pad. And now we're down to our base plate. We can leave the head attached and go ahead to the dogging. We're going to remove the first two pieces of the dogging so they're out of the way when we remove the rivets. And you're going to have two options for removing the rivets. The first option, recommended option, is to use a pin punch with a hammer. And you're going to go ahead and just give two or three good hits over those rivets. And they should just drop right out and you should be able to easily remove the dogging. Second option is if you have a sharp 3 16 drill bit, you can also drill out those rivets. Slightly messier, but that'll do the trick as well. Next, we're gonna remove the latch pin. And with the small flat head, I'm just gonna pull up on the C-clip. Once I have that C-clip off, I'm gonna remove the pin. And we need to do this step because this bracket that would be attaching to the latch, we're going to need to move freely. And now removing the shock absorber, I like to gently pull outward and unclick the sides. And then I'm going to push down the activating bracket and slide it right out. Next, we're going to be installing the kit. And that latch bracket that should be attached, um, you're going to want to push down the activating arm and then slide that back until we see those two holes in the back. We're going to grab our retraction pin. We want the small side to go in first, as we can see here. We're not going to slide it all the way in quite yet. Uh, we're just going to slide it slightly in so the bracket stays in place while we grab our connecting rod, the end bracket. And we see it here, and you're going to want to make sure that the threaded side is facing you and also the other threaded hole is facing upward. And once we have those two in place, we're going to slide we're going to slide the retraction pin through those two unthreaded holes. And once we get that right on there, I'm going to push down on the activating arm and slide that retraction pin right on through um, till it clicks into the hole on the other side of the bracket and then I'm going to also just want to make sure that that connecting rod end bracket is centered so that when I release the activating arm it can go back to its natural position and not get caught up just like that now I'm going to grab my hex wrench and hex screw provided and make sure that I secure that connecting rod end bracket on there once that's nice and secure, I'm going to go ahead and grab my plunger and connecting rods. You're going to have two connecting rods, one for a 48 inch, which is pictured, and one for a 36. I'm going to show you how to switch these out. So I'm just going to go ahead and spin the plunger counterclockwise. And there's going to be a spring in there. I'm going to re remove the spring remove the connecting rod from the threading and slide the 36 inch connecting rod and you want to make sure threading goes through first and once that's through there I'm going to replace the spring and screw back on the plunger and I'm all set to go so I'm going to get that connecting rod and starting from the back feed it through all the way up to the connecting rod end bracket we just installed and I am going to screw that on there. Once that's all the way screwed on, 
Now I'm going to jump back up to that connecting rod end bracket. You can see here that the thread is showing, so we're going to want to rotate it until this smooth part is showing so that when we connect this hex wrench and secure it down into place with our hex screw, um, that that thread is not damaged. So once we find the right spot, we're going to go ahead and screw our hex screw in. Once our hex screw is good and secure, we're going to grab our solenoid. Make sure that you put the plunger in the middle as you're sliding it up into the base plate. It's going to fit nicely in those grooves there. When the holes line up, we're going to grab our solenoid mount screws and you could either tighten these with a Phillips head screwdriver or drill your preference and once those are tightened we just want to make sure they're nice and snug there and once those are both on we're gonna jump back up to the front and reinstall the latch pin with the C-clip and no tools needed for this Get some fingers on both sides and press down and it clicks right back into place. And now we're going to also remember to reinstall the shock absorber. Just put it right in that little notch and push down and it clicks right into place. And what we recommend next is to install the PM300. And if you do have a power source, we recommend testing it at this point. So we can get the proper adjustment on the latch. Going to plug it into our power source. Going to go ahead and fire it, and we can see here that it is not retracting all the way when we fire the device. So we go ahead and adjust this, and we can adjust it by just unscrewing the plunger or screwing it and eating up more threads. Here I'm going to go ahead and eat a few more threads. What we typically recommend is you would want to have somewhere around six to ten threads showing before you reach the plunger. That's usually the uh, the correct adjustment we found. Can vary from device to device. We'll see here. It looks like we're retracting now right to where we want it. Once you have your adjustment down we can go back to the plunger and grab our last hex screw and again here we want to make sure the smooth part is facing us um, not the threaded part so we don't damage the threading and grab that last hex screw and we're going to screw it in there just to make sure that that'll make sure that our adjustment is secure and when we're tightening it we want to make sure we don't tighten too much so that it doesn't damage the spring in there and next we're going to go ahead and reassemble the device by replacing the push pad. I like to take out the PM300 so that it's easier to slide on the base rail. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that solenoid goes in there first. It has to go in in between, it can't go on to the top of the base rail. And I'm going to go ahead and slide it on, make sure those push pad guides are in place and slide on that rail and once that rail is on there I'm going to go ahead and grab those two screws and our 5 16 nut driver and replace that rear head bracket again if needed you can use a flathead screwdriver but it is recommended to use the 5 16 nut driver much easier and then once I'm done with that, I'm going to replace the front head bracket and the head cover. Now I'm going to come back here, remove the filler plate, go ahead and reattach my PM300. It's going to fit nicely right in the back of the device. And we can see here on this filler plate that this device did have dogging that we removed earlier so we do supply a dogging cap that we can go ahead and plug that hole with and now your device is ready to go.